Hi, welcome back. So we're going to try and restore the QL back to function. This is the original keyboard membrane that uh, was basically knackered. Did a bunch of testing um, and some of it works, but there's a lot of these little contacts that are just not working. So yeah, that's basically scrap. So I ordered this from, oh, was it Syntec? And uh, it's, a, um, it's a new manufactured um, membrane. So let's carefully get this open. And uh, this was manufactured back in, so it's, it's new, manufactured back in 2023, I think. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a new piece. So hopefully it's gonna be an easy, easy fit. careful how I do this. I was going to use a knife but I was a bit worried about that. There he is. That's the new one. Okay well it looks identical which is a good thing. <laughs> Let's hope it's electrically not identical and it works. Um, let's just compare the two. Yeah I mean you can, you can tell it's, it's quite different but I hope that's a good thing. Um, it's it's more it feels more robust than that. This is much more flexible. This is less flexible. So let's hope that's a good thing. Anyway, so where were we? This ideally could do with a bit of a clean, but uh, I'm more keen to actually get the thing working than how it looks. Um, I really want to start messing around with this. So let's get this open again. Um, yeah, and let's 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 assemble it. So these little screws come out. There's quite a few of them knocking about in this. And that's the, so this, this is the retaining plate. Uh, yeah, this is the retaining plate that holds the keyboard membrane in position. So that's, yeah, so that goes in there like that. Um, so I don't believe, yeah, so these, these are not screwed directly, so they're, they're onto those posts there. Yeah, and they go from underneath. So I think it's just these internal screws um, that are actually uh, done, so that's good. So there was actually Way around is it? Is that, that's that way around. Yeah. So there's these little posts here, those screw holes that actually help locate the keyboard membrane like that. Well, it's slightly tricky because as, as you push it down, it um, it pushes the keys up. That's annoying. I'm I'm, a bit, I'm wondering. I've got a couple of remote controls here, it's a bit of a weird one, but I've actually got rubberized keys, so that might be quite good. So I'll put one there, and I'll put one, it's difficult because the keys are right on the edge. Let's this power side of the way. So that's good because that, that keeps it, the keys down. So those are the positions there. Obviously these have got to be exact. Otherwise, things go wrong. Okay, so so that's that, and let's get some. Okay, I think that should be that should be it, really. So we'll put some, put all the screws in. I'm, I'm just going to be brave and put all the screws in because there's kind of no point in dicking around at this point, we just need to get it done. So I want to do some testing on this. Well, I haven't really tested the micro drives particularly. It, just, it didn't work before, but then, you know, there's a lot of stuff I just couldn't type. <laughs> so 
So I'm hoping that it's um, it was just a um, just because you know. Well, it, it, what am I trying to say? This hasn't been used before. It's something you for a long, long time. I mean, so obviously it needs to go through some testing and and whatnot. Um, so the next step is put my glasses on. Next step is to get these cables uh, routed correctly. So you can see which way around it is. So that's the conductive surface there. Uh, and they're facing different ways. So that one goes that way and that one goes that way. So let's just line this up a little bit. I'm trying to make sure that there's no um, these aren't creased. The other keyboard membrane was, I don't know whether you recall, but you see how twisted up it was? I think as it was put together and the case was was reassembled, it all got creased up and nasty, so that's now a piece of weird objet d'art. Okay, so that looks okay. Uh, I think it's actually this cable here which causes the main the most pain, but there you go. So let's let's move that that way a little bit. There's actually a post there, so I've got to be careful. So there you go. Now this is closed up really nicely. Before you can actually see the cable there, the keyboard membrane actually squashes up against the serial ports, which is not great. But if it works, it works. This is the design of the unit, so I mean, it is what it is. You know, there's not much you can do. So the side with the micro drives on. I don't know whether you recall from last time, there was one of the screws that was particularly uh, messed up in terms of its the head. So um, these longer screws, that was that one there, you see that had that security thing on it. So these longer screws go at the back. Move this out of the way a minute. I really should test this before I reassemble it, but as noted before, you can't really test the um, you can't test the micro drives unless the whole thing is reassembled because it relies on the top cover to align everything for the cartridges, which is is what it is, I guess. It's just a bit annoying because you know doing doing stuff. Uh, debugging and things like that with the cover off um, would be desirable <laughs> when things go wrong but there you go okay so those two go in there yeah so it's really these three screws that are the main ones in terms of its the micro drives with these attached everything is is solid so they're just Four more screws on the on the side here on this edge. I mean, I know I moan about the keyboard membrane. It's such as don't like them particularly. And it's not so much the membrane; it's that stupid cable. I do moan about that. And same for the ZC1, the the the, the Spectrum 48K, the Spectrum Plus. It's all crap. But this QL, I like the design of it. The physical design of it. It's really quite nice. Right, so that's now hopefully working. Um, as an aside, I've ordered uh, some connectors uh, for these serial ports, so I'm going to try and restore that and, and connect it up to a PC. Uh, I've also got to make a RGB cable. Um, there's always more to do, always. Right, let me plug this in. So let's do this. F2. Well, that worked. That's good. I tried to load something. So let's just print. Oh, look at that. The actual backspace uh, control 
left worked so you can you can turn go to 20 go to 10 run look at that great stuff so I don't know uh, how do you how do you escape it well I've got the reset button in the back so I think I've got some stuff here so we've got QL archive QL was that easel QL quill and QL abacus let's try this one which is the quill let's plug that in there and reset and F2 I don't know whether this this is going to work you see I have no idea whether any of the micro drives work all these cartridges are ancient I love this little styling that's really cool <laughs> look at that <laughs> but I don't know whether any of them work so completely untested I think it's uh, this is a continuous loop tape on uh, these micro drives that I don't believe there's, there's, a, there's an end to it it just spins round uh, and I think what it does is it tries to find the um, the start of the program uh, to load it uh, but I think this did it last time and I don't think it's going to find it I, I suspect it's um, these cartridges are just knackered yeah I'm not sure that's going to actually do anything I've got two of these actually apparently this one costs six pounds <laughs> but it's the same thing quill abacus archive and easel Sure how you quit that actually. Right, let's take something random. This is QL easel. And then we'll just remove that. Like I say, this is totally untested. I have no clue as to whether these are any good. Uh, let's try a different one. I'm not sure whether it can boot from both. I'm not sure. Ah no, it only boots from that one. Okay, so boots from drive one. So let's try that again. So we've got the uh, serial ports. Uh, what I want to do is uh, it start messing around with the serial ports and some trans data transfer. Ah, that did stop actually. That's interesting. So, um, DIR. So do a directory listing. Uh, MDV one underscore. Okay. So that's microdrive one. And I think when we did this last time, it, it came up with a ah with a not found. Now I don't know whether this is probably not a good idea, but do I just delete it? Do I just format it? It seems to be knackered, and I, I, I the idea I oh, just just let's just flip into it. Format uh, MDV one underscore. I'm not sure whether it needs a. Another name. A little book here. Format failed. Okay, so maybe these are all knackered. Or maybe the drives are gone. I don't know. So the next step is to uh, get some software on there. You can load stuff from serial ports. Um, so that's, that's what I'm going to try and do. Um, yeah, cool. Well, anyway, at least, at least the keyboard works. And that's... That's the right result. I mean, it's, is it the nicest keyboard? Not really, but it works, um, and that's the amazing. That, that's that's the main thing. Uh, it's a shame that didn't work actually. I'll tell you what, let's try that. Let's actually try that in that other one. So uh, format MDV2 underscore. That's that other drive. I wonder if it formats in there. Makes all of what hell? Makes all ah the teeth in. Makes a hell of a noise. Format failed. Okay. And DIR MDV2 
two underscore. Not found. Hmm. Oh well, uh, that's for a next step, I guess. Uh, anyway, for now it's working, so that's a that's a result. Um, right, well, I missed the start of that. Just messing around with some other other cartridges. <laughs> Things flipping loading. Now, I don't think it's loading very nicely. It seems to be taking quite a while to to uh, to do it. This has been loading now for about a minute. Uh, but I'm not sure what the load times are on, on, on these things. Um, I know there's, there's, there's 100k per cartridge, um, about five meters worth of tape. So it's supposed to only take seven seconds to locate a the file so I don't know what's going on but th that's working now what I noticed was it in here uh, which is the one I tested before so this was QL easel noticed in there there's supposed to be like a, a little brush thing that is there to push the tape against the head and um, it's not there so that's just completely worn away that one you can see there's a bit more to it uh, on that one, but that's worn away as well. The one I've just tried to load, it's failed. If you notice, that, that, that brush is actually bigger. It seems to have disappeared half of it. Um, so that might be part of the problem. And the actual micro drives themselves, I think, are working. I mean, this is loaded stuff. So if we just grab another one and see whether... Yeah, you can see here, that's completely worn away. There's nothing there at all. So I suspect that the micro drive itself is working. So that's got one. So that may work. The micro drive itself uh, possibly working. It's just that the cartridges are, are worn out. I wonder whether it's possible to dismantle these things and, um, and put a little pad in. I mean, it's similar to the stuff that's in ordinary cassettes. Um, well, that's great that it loaded something. At least we're getting some some response. I did clean the heads before, and the captions looked okay. Uh, that's the right result. Obviously, there's a potential that all of my cartridges are knackered. Wow, look at that! Loading spreadsheet, cool. So that's another one there that may have stuff on it. I don't know, that may be enough. Uh, that seems to be a critical component. And from what I've read, it's the one that uh, the wears out. Because obviously, as, as the tape flies past it, it's, it's pushing against the head. But it will eventually just wear away. And worst case, you can get it disintegrating. As it seems like most of these flipping cartridges have. Um, there's another one there. I think I've got them all out. What's that one like? Oh, that one's got a bit on it. Yeah, so this one's potentially okay. Um, so I might have three out of one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six that are dead and three that possibly are working to a degree. I'm not sure. I'm not sure this is going to load. It's obviously got the first part. I think it's taking longer than it should take. But anyway, I'm thinking that's positive. That is a good thing. I'm happy with that. Uh, and maybe we take one of these as a example uh, at line eight, uh, line eight bad or changed medium. Oh, yeah. Ah, on type. Okay, channel not open. Uh, yeah, interesting that. Very interesting. What was that other one that I just? from the yeah that one there so that one might have let's try that one I really need to get myself a monitor connection for this for this so these have potential archive too bad or change medium <laughs> let's see if we can do a directory so uh, mdv one underscore
take that other one there and put it into drive two. I'm not sure that's going to work. So uh, I think I've read somewhere that so, so seven seven seconds should be the maximum needed to uh, to find a program uh, on the cartridge. Change medium. Okay, so I'm going to eject MDV1. I'm going to restart that. I probably didn't need to do that actually. So it's going to look at MDV1. There's nothing in there. So I do a DIR MDV2. I, mean, I know there's a cartridge in there. Let's see whether we can get an index off there. Oh wow, look at that! <laughs> there's a directory listing on there. That's really cool. Oh my goodness, that is really good news. Okay, I mean, it's that sad. That drive sounds horrible. But it is what it is. It's an old machine. I suspect that's probably going to fail. No, actually, it didn't. Okay. So, um, what was that command? Uh, what was it again? How. Something like L run, something like that. Oh, flip the neck. I've got to try and remember these things. Devices and file transfer 93. So it says DIR microdrive basic. Consoles and then there. Board copy. DR format delete load. Super basic program. L run, okay. M run. Now that's merge. Net okay, so uh, L run, you put that on there. So, where L run MDV2 underscore boot is that gonna work? Probably not. <laughs> Wee, that makes weird noises. <laughs> Apparently, some of these machines they what they don't like loading off, off the second drive. Um, One more try, let's try and load that on MDV1. I w I, as I've said before, I really need to get myself, I make myself a monitor connection. O on the RGB, there's a composite output, so it should be fairly straightforward. And I may only need two cables, an internal speaker in it, so just two cables, ground and the composite video. Um, I think that might be worth a try because that's pretty braunchy looking. And on the monitor output, uh, you can get, I believe, you can get 80 column. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to load. But progress, it's back from, well, I wouldn't say it's back from the dead. Uh, most of these things are absolutely knackered. But I am going to try and fix it using a similar stuff to the, uh, what comes out of ordinary cassettes. Maybe I can take it to pieces and, and glue something on there, maybe. Tricky. To get the right kind of uh, material. Although uh, it's like a little foam pad. Hmm. And I've got a, a tin of, of old cassette parts because when I've been doing the Auric tape transfer, tape recovery, it's um, yeah, it's, it's going to be the same stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. It ain't working quite right, but we're making progress. See you next time.